Yeah, so I'm Andres Cristi from Universidad de Chile. I'm presenting today this uh, work called On the Price of Anarchy for Flows Over Time. And it's a uh, joint work with my advisor, Jose Correa, and with my friend Tim Osterwig uh, from uh, Maastricht University. Um, right. So I want you to think on this situation. I'm in Santiago. I'm at home. I'm going, I'm going to the university, but it's very early, earlier than usual, so I don't know how the traffic is. So I open Google Maps, and uh, it tells me this. So the shortest path to the university has some traffic, but it's concentrated only at the beginning. So it still makes sense to use this path, because I always spend only little time in traffic. And uh, then I start writing. Um, but I realized in the middle of the journey that all the traffic jam was moving with me, so I end up spending a lot of more time than I considered. Um, and I like, then I should have used Waze or something else. Um, but uh, the thing is, if this was my usual time, then I'd know uh, that this would happen, right? Uh, because I know that the traffic would move with me and uh, I would have decided to uh, use the bottom path. Um, or if navigation app was smarter, uh, would have predicted this in some way, I don't know, with historical data or, I don't know, some algorithm. But the point is, um, as long as uh, people start considering like, future traffic conditions and all, not only... So uh, there is this uh, model, the fluid uh, queuing model, uh, which is in some sense basic and thus uh, takes uh, this time into account. Uh, it considers a non-atomic flow. And uh, what it does, of course, um, as usual, a road is a link in a directed graph, right? But uh, how flow traverses uh, the link is as follows. There is some kind of container at the beginning of the link, at the tail of the link, um, that has uh, some kind of bottleneck with a fixed capacity, this nu e. Uh, so it allows only this capacity, this uh, amount of flow per unit of time to traverse the link at any point in time. And after a particle uh, goes through this container, it uh, goes to this uh, fixed travel time tau e. So, so a link is some kind of container at the beginning, and then this fixed travel time. So uh, when the inflow into a link is larger than this capacity, a queue starts building up, right? <clears throat> so, uh, to be more precise, uh, in the model we have a directed graph, a uh, source and a sink, a constant inflow rate uh, that is entering in S to the network, uh, trying to go to T, and a total amount of flow M that is going to, to traverse the, the, the network. And of course, as I said, there is a capacity and a travel time for each link in the network. As far as good. Uh, and uh, so to be more precise about the link dynamics, uh, I will introduce uh, a lot of notation, but uh, it is how it is. Um, so we have this, this link. As I said, this, it is, you can imagine as a, as a container at the beginning of the link. So we have an inflow rate F plus. Uh, and uh, at a given time theta, there is a Q of size Z E of theta. And the particle at an infinitesimal, infinitesimally small particle that enters at time theta to the link will spend a time Z E over nu E waiting in the Q, right? Uh, waiting for the uh, particles or the flow that is in the Q uh, traverses this bottleneck of size nu E, right? So this particle that entered at time theta will uh, exit the link at time theta plus the queuing time, C over nu e, plus this constant travel time tau e. And uh, to be even more precise, uh, the, how the queue evolves, uh, if it's not empty, uh, its derivative is just the difference between what is entering and what is leaving, right? And if it is, if it is empty, then it uh, grows only if what, it ent what enters is larger than the capacity. And uh, what uh, exits 
uh, at time theta plus tau e? Well, the complete capacity if there is uh, a Q, or the minimum between the, the, the capacity and the flow rate if there is no Q. Right? So uh, let me go over a very uh, little example. Uh, in this instance, everything is so simple. It's just two links, so not everything will show up. Not everything, every uh, I don't know, characteristic of the model will show up, but some feeling you will have. Uh, and it's an example of the equilibrium. And with equilibrium, I mean, uh, in general, like each infinitesimally small particle, again, uh, is using a shortest path, OK? And a shortest path, well, here there are only two links, but in, gen in a more general network, uh, a shortest path con considering the total transit times when the particle arrives at that given link. OK, so it's z e of the time at which the particle arrives at that link over nu e plus tau e. Right? Here, uh, all particles start at S, so it's not uh, that complicated. Let's, let's go over it. So we have two links, one with, uh, both with capacity one. One is much shorter. One is, has travel time zero, and the other one, one. Uh, so at the beginning, everyone wants to use the top link, right? Uh, because it's so short. Uh, and actually, from time zero to one, uh, everyone is using the top link, so an inflow rate of Two, this u zero is the inflow rate, uh, is going through the top link and has capacity one. So the Q starts growing at the right one, right? And then it grows until time one, at which it's exactly one. But we run out of, uh, of flow, right? So uh, at this point, it just starts em emptying. But if we had more flow at the beginning, right, uh, half of the particles would start going also through the bottom link, right? From, from now on, half and half would split so that the Q stays the same and both uh, links stay interesting, right? Um, right. And uh, our question is, at what time the last particle arrives at the sink? So the last particle departed at time one, right? And it had to wait one unit of time for the Q to deplete, right? So it arrives at time two to the sink. And what if we wanted to minimize this time? What would we have to uh, do is a different thing. We would have to split, right, from the beginning, the flow. Um, so that's what the optimum would do, uh, split the, the inflow uh, into one unit to the top link, one unit to the bottom link. Uh, for the first half, I don't know, second or unit of time. Uh, so one unit uh, departed already. And then from 0.5 to 1.5, only the top link. So that the last particle that departed uh, and used the, top bot the bottom link arrives at 1.5. And the last particle that uses the top link also arrives at 1.5. And uh, Q never builds up, right? So in this example, in the optimum flow, uh, the last particle arrives at time 1.5, right? So a question is how large uh, this ratio can be. The arrival time of the last particle in the equilibrium uh, over the arrival of the last particle in, in opt. In the previous example, it was 4 over 3, right? It was uh, 2 divided by uh, 1.5, so it's uh, 4 over 3. And um, OK, so uh, just to say uh, some important results, important to, to our work and uh, this talk in, talk in particular. Um, so uh, Fordal Ferguson and, and also David Gale uh, figured out that uh, in this model, from, from the optimization point of view, uh, a static flow pattern achieves the, the optimal performance. And uh, with a static flow pattern, I mean there is a static flow in the, in the usual sense of a flow in a network that satisfies the capacity, so it doesn't build up a queues, um, that is repeated 
in time that achieves this, this optimal performance. And it can be found through a simple LP, a, a flow uh, LP. Um, then uh, in uh, 2009, Koch and Scutella gave a characterization of the di derivatives of the dynamic equilibrium. Uh, these derivatives are the solution to some um, uh, com uh, linear complementarity problem. And with this uh, characterization, Correa Community and Larre uh, gave an existence uh, proof and also a uniqueness proof of the dynamic equilibrium. All right? Uh, and it turns out that the dynamic equilibrium has a nice uh, form, it uh, has some phases, and in which of these phases the, these derivatives uh, are constant. So it's piecewise linear in a sense, the dynamic equilibrium. Um, <clears throat> And uh, there is this uh, result by Pascal, Fleischer, and Schelevig uh, from 2011 that says the following. If opt, opt in the sense uh, of Ford and Fulkerson and Gale, this static flow that is repeated, if this static flow saturates all capacities in the networks, in the network, say it's equal, in each link is equal to the capacity, then the price of anarchy is at most E over E minus one. Well, uh, this static flow thing might be a bit confusing because of the example I gave, uh, gave you before. Uh, it changed a bit, but it is only on the end that you can think that uh, it changed before, sorry, it changed because uh, some particles were not going to arrive at, on time to the sink if they use the bottom link. But you can think that they departed anyways and uh, we just uh, forget about them. So it's, you can think of opt as some static flow that's being repeated. So our result is in, in the flavor of uh, Pascal, Fleischer, and Schelevig, uh, but it's uh, more general in the sense that uh, we only require that this optimum uh, static flow saturates uh, the inflow rate, okay? So uh, think that optimo, the optimum might want to uh, hold some particles at the beginning and not to send everything uh, as fast as U0 uh, permits. But if up does, uh, doesn't do this, if it saturates U0, then the price of anarchy is E over E minus one, roughly 1.58. And uh, it has two sides to it. Uh, one is uh, like a mechanism design kind of uh, result. So if we could reduce the inflow rate to the network, we could guarantee this, right? We calculate the optimum flow of the network, calculate what is the inflow rate. If it's not U0, if it's less, we just uh, close the gate a bit and uh, then we ensure that uh, the equilibrium is not much worse than the optimum. And this is not too far from reality because uh, there exists these RAM meters in freeways that regulate the inflow to the freeway, right? So we could implement like some kind of light that lets uh, vehicles to enter at some uh, r predefined uh, rate that, is, that might be lower than the actual capacity of the, of the road, right? Uh, and the other side is uh, through this monotonicity conjecture. So um, a lot of people uh, working in this model think that there should be some a monotonicity for the equilibrium in the sense that if you have uh, a smaller inflow rate, then particles shouldn't arrive uh, earlier, right? Uh, the last particle shouldn't arrive early, in particular. So uh, we believe this, people believe this, but there's no proof yet, no counterexample either. But if this was true, then our result would also imply a general uh, price of anarchy, right? Of uh, the same number, 1.5. And uh, in the few minutes I have left, um, I'd like to uh, tell you uh, how this works in, in a parallel link network, where this uh, monotonicity holds true, actually, but I, but I won't prove that. And actually, uh, the price of anarchy is a bit better, it's four over three. Um, right, so if you have this parallel link network, um, 
uh, and I denote this L this as by LT of theta the, the time at which a particle departing at theta uh, arrives at T um, and the last particle in the equilibrium departs as uh, uh, theta hat uh, then I can write a relation between the um, arrival, the, the max span of the equilibrium and the max span of the optimum, uh, okay, through this identity. Um, I think I don't have time to go into the details. But the, the, the main idea is that uh, we have two lemmas, uh, one that relates the difference between the two max spans uh, here in red, and the Q sizes in the equilibrium. And uh, a second lemma that relates the size of the equilibrium with the max span of the equilibrium. Um, right, and, and if we combine these things, uh, we obtain, uh, we obtain the, the, the bounding one. So, right, I don't have time to do the proof, but uh, uh, what we did then is, is to prove this uh, price of anarchy of E over E minus one if we can control the inflow rate. Or uh, we have this bound if the conjecture, the monotonicity conjecture holds, right? And we know that this monotonicity conjecture is true for parallel links, parallel links and even for parallel paths networks. Um, and in this model, there are many, many open questions, uh, and important op open questions, actually, because it's, it's hard to, to deal with, this model. So there are many things that we don't know. Well, in, uh, in fact, this uh, same monotonicity conjecture is, is important by itself, right? So um, we wonder, maybe it is uh, easier to prove it for, for simpler topologies like series parallel, we know it's true for, for parallel paths, so maybe there is a way to extend this to series parallel. Um, also, maybe we can consider this mechanism design uh, perspective for, for other measure, maybe flow for a given time. This was uh, time for a given flow, right? Uh, the computation of the dynamic equilibrium is also an open uh, question um, because we don't know how to solve this linear complementarity problem or whether there is a finite number of phases um, and extensions of the model, there are also like many to make even more realistic. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting model and I uh, encourage you to look at it. Uh, thank you. Ah, yes. Yeah, no, this E over E minus one is, uh, there, there is a tight example. Yeah, yeah, and the limit is, is tight, yeah. Um, yeah, and, the, and for this other uh, max flow in a given time, it's unbounded, actually. Uh, it's an instance where it's unbounded. But uh, the, uh, that's why I mentioned this mechanism design, because it's, it's not being considered. It's a possibility that it works.